Yellowstone National Park is best known for its geysers, including the world's tallest active geyser, Steamboat Geyser. But Yellowstone is also home to a supervolcano. It might be over 600,000 years old. And that makes it difficult to know what kind of shape it's in today because, well, it's hard to date stuff that old. But there are some ways scientists can get a handle on just how ancient it is and whether or not it might be due for another blast. It's me, and you're watching this channel. And if you want to learn more about the amazing science that happens all around us, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. In order to figure out how long Yellowstone's been around, scientists have counted tree rings. Yes, even fossilized tree rings. Scientists also used radiocarbon dating, which uses the breakdown of carbon isotopes and computer modeling to estimate the age of an object based on the amount of a particular isotope left in it. The problem is with this method is that it only works on things up to about 50,000 years old, so it doesn't help us understand how old the entire park is. Instead, scientists turn to rocks. Specifically, they look at a type of rock called tephra. Tephra is formed when magma is violently ejected from a volcano. Some pieces are small like ash, while others are large like blocks. By studying the composition and distribution of these rocks, scientists can determine where and when past eruptions occurred. Now, one of the biggest problems here is that while we know Yellowstone has had three major eruption periods, Scientists aren't 100% sure which ancient deposits are from the same events. This makes it harder to know how frequently and how intensely Yellowstone has erupted in the past. We found charcoal in the ash from some of those ancient blasts, but finding actual fossils is rare. So without a clear chain of evidence linking all the eruptions together, it's tough to tell how old the oldest piece of debris is, but recent research may finally shed some light on the issue. A study published in April 2023 identified the ages of five previously undated tephra layers in Yellowstone's rhyolitic ash flow. These five layers came from separate eruptions that took place between 14 and 17 million years ago. Four of them were quite large and the fifth was relatively small. Together, they add to our understanding of how this supervolcano has changed over time. The researchers wanted to find out more about Yellowstone's history before 100,000 years ago, before radiocarbon dating becomes unreliable. To do this, they collected samples from the five layers of ash, focusing on microscopic mineral grains called zircons. Zircons form early in magma chambers, record the conditions under which they form, and persist through a volcano's entire life cycle. They're basically tiny time capsules. When the magma chamber begins to empty during an eruption, the pressure drops dramatically. That causes some volatile compounds like water and CO2 to become gas bubbles in the magma. As the magma continues to move towards Earth's surface, the pressure rises again. But if the magma contains too many gas bubbles, that pressure can cause the magma to explode violently. The larger the magma chamber and the slower the magma moves, the more gas bubbles can accumulate and the more explosive the eruption could be. So by analyzing the chemical properties of zircons, scientists can identify the extent to which these volatile compounds affected each eruption and help scientists better understand the evolution of magmatic systems over millions of years. In this case, by looking at the size of zircon crystals, researchers could tell how fast the magma was moving and whether or not it contained lots of gas bubbles. Smaller crystals suggest faster movement and fewer bubbles. Larger crystals suggest slower movement and more bubbles. They also looked at the shape of the zircons to see if they'd experience changes in pressure similar to what happens in a pot of boiling water when it reaches a rolling boil. Magma that's rising rapidly and violently will cause the zircon crystals to take on rounded edges. Crystals that formed more slowly have sharp edges. Finally, the amount of a radioactive element called argon in the zircons revealed how long each crystal had been cooling. All of this data allowed the team to reconstruct the history of the five magma chambers prior to their violent eruptions. First, the magma chamber related to the Lava Creek event had been slowly filling for over a half million years. Then it emptied in a series of small eruptions. Second, 
After the Lava Creek eruption, the magma chamber started to refill. But the magma didn't stay put. It moved eastward, creating small magma chambers along the way. The third and fourth eruptions emptied two of these small chambers, but the magma continued to move east and made its way into the modern magma chamber. Finally, the fifth and smallest eruption happened after most of the magma had migrated out of the system. And here's where the fossil record comes in. The researchers found fossils of aquatic animals like diatoms, radiolarians and foraminifera in the deposits from the first and second eruptions. Fossils like these are usually found in marine sedimentary rocks. Their presence suggests that Yellowstone was once a huge lake surrounded by forest. The eruption emptied the lake and created the Yellowstone caldera, which eventually became the modern-day Yellowstone Lake. But the second piece of the puzzle comes from the fission track dating technique. Fission track dating looks at the paths left behind by the breakdown of uranium atoms. When a rock containing uranium is heated, tiny trails are left behind. And because uranium is found in zircon, the trails are preserved in the zircon. By counting the number of trails in a given area, scientists can calculate how long it's been since the zircon cooled below a certain temperature. Using this method, the researchers found that the magma chamber related to the Lava Creek eruption crystallized 24 million years ago. This means the first eruption was much older than previously thought. Before this research, scientists estimated that the oldest eruption at Yellowstone was somewhere between 9 and 11 million years old. So this discovery makes Yellowstone's magma chamber more than twice as old as previously thought. So the question becomes, if Yellowstone has been around for 24 million years, why haven't we noticed the signs of another super-eruption coming? Well, it's important to remember that the length of time between eruptions has varied wildly in the past. For example, the Huckleberry Ridge eruption happened about 2.1 million years ago. Prior to that, the Mesa Falls eruption occurred about 1.3 million years ago. That's an average of 1.7 million years between eruptions. But the time between the Mesa Falls and Lava Creek eruptions was 500,000 years. This tells us that the interval between large eruptions may be shrinking. But it would be wrong to use this pattern to predict when the next super-eruption might happen. There's no guarantee that the same patterns that we observe today will hold true in the future. After all, the time between the second and third eruptions was 10 million years. Plus, it would be a mistake to assume that all of Yellowstone's magma chambers behave the same way. Each one is unique and has its own story to tell. And while the fossil and zircon evidence can tell us about the history of individual eruptions, it can't show us the full picture of how Yellowstone's magma chambers are linked. We simply don't have enough evidence to understand the complete evolution of the whole system. But that hasn't stopped people from trying. One model estimates that Yellowstone's magma chambers are connected and that the entire system holds about 28,000 cubic kilometers of magma. Another group says there are four separate magma chambers, while a third group thinks there are seven. Some scientists even think there are more than 100 individual chambers, and the reality may lie somewhere in between. Perhaps there's a central magma chamber that's connected to smaller chambers scattered across the region. Or maybe the connections between chambers come and go as magma migrates through the crust. As we continue to gather more evidence and test different models, we'll begin to understand Yellowstone's eruptions in greater detail. And that will not only teach us about the history of this magnificent place, it will help us prepare for whatever comes next. Yellowstone National Park is open year-round. So if you're near the area, be sure to check it out for yourself. And if you want to support more science explainers, be sure to subscribe and follow this channel. And thanks for watching.